All right, all right, all right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. This is another live stream event. I do these uh, about once a month uh, for the most part, um, sometimes uh, more than that, but I've been keeping it to about once a month as my schedule allows. So I just wanted to welcome everyone for being uh, a part of the show. Thank you for all your support. And uh, we'll uh, get started here in a few minutes. We'll let some people join. Hello, Barbie. Welcome. Barbie, let me know if you can hear me okay. Hello, Susu. Hello, Latin J. Hello, Ahmad. Okay, great. Glad you can. Uh, glad you can hear me. Great. So we're just going to hit sit here and uh, chat a little bit and wait for more people to show up, and then we'll get on with the show. Hello, Latin J. Hello, Maria. So for those of you who, if this is your first time um, being on a live show, if you look over here, oh, let me see, right here. If you look over here, this is uh, where I film the videos. <laughs> it's kind of hard to point backwards. Anyway, right over here is where I film the video. It's pretty awesome. My kitchen is really, really small and it's hard to film in there. If you watch some of my really early videos, um, I actually stand inside my kitchen. And um, like my cinnamon roll video, a lot of you have come here to my show from my cinnamon roll video. And in that video, I am standing in the kitchen. Once I remodel the kitchen, I'll be able to uh, film back in there. It just uh, takes a lot of money to remodel the kitchen. Um, but when I do that, I'll be able to have move my camera around and get the angles that I want. It was just too hard. Um, so I moved it over to my little dining room table. I know some people have wondered, why are you sitting down when you cook? Purely for the ease of filming. <laughs> um, so in case you're wondering why I sit down at the table, that is the reason. And the table is not high enough to stand at and the chandelier would be in the way if I... Um, if I stood anyway, I guess you can call it a chandelier. It's not much of a chandelier. The, uh, the lighting element above the table. Anyway, I am doing well, Susu, how are you? Thanks, Barbie. I will eventually want to remodel even if I don't film in there um, just because um, it's really outdated, old, and it will help the resale value of my townhome Eventually, when I have enough money, I will move out of this house into a, um, a larger home with a kitchen that has a lot of natural light. And um, this house is just pretty small. So I will want to remodel this current kitchen anyway for, um, to help the value of the home. But it uh, just depends if I will do that and still film here or if I will remodel it after I move. I, I just I'm not sure about that yet. That's far into the future. I don't have enough money to remodel anyway, so. <laughs> All right, where is it? Where is everyone? Uh, what uh, countries or states or is everyone um, chatting in from? I am here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's super hot. Even though it's September already, it's still pretty hot. I think a couple of days ago, we still reached 110 degrees. 
I think it's supposed to cool down a little bit. Let's see what the forecast is for today. The high today, September 7th, the high is 105 Fahrenheit. <laughs> yep, still warm. Uh, Barbie's in the UK. Can't wait to visit the UK someday. A lot of my heritage comes from the UK. Latin J's in the Caribbean. Awesome. I've been to Cancun. Is that part of the Caribbean? I can't remember. Anyway, I think it might be part of the Caribbean. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> um, Barbie says the summer is over for her in the UK. Do you ever really have a summer in the UK? It seems like it's always cloudy there, regardless of the time of year. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to start to get cold for you. Um, it'll get cold here in Phoenix, but not until late November. I mean, it can get cold. Like if I don't turn on my heater, it'll get down to like low 60s inside my house. And outside, we will get into the 30s. Uh, we won't re really get colder than that, but it'll only be for a couple months and then we start warming up again. Oh yes, Cancun is in Mexico. So Caribbean would be like, um, I don't know, like uh, Bahamas? The Bahamas, is that in the Caribbean where they, they just had the massive um, Dorian hit? My geography is not the best. Um, yes, Cancun is Mexico, that's right. <laughs> I was there when I was like 21. That was a long time ago. The Caribbean. St. Thomas? Is that the Caribbean? Or is that the Pacific? That's more in the Pacific. I don't know. Inoka, hello. In Sh Sri Lanka. 9.30 p.m. in Sri Lanka. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> uh, good movies. Good movies. Anyway, all right, what time is it? Uh, let's give it about a couple more minutes and let a few more people join. So glad that everyone here is joining. So if you didn't get my message, I sent a message via my channel, custom channel thing. Um, so the giveaway for the book, in order to be entered into that, you need to uh, write a comment and do a like on my um, mini cheesecake video on this one. This is the last video I did. So if you haven't done it, go over to there. Um, you can open up a new browser window so you don't um, so you don't change out from here um, the chat window and open up a new browser. Visit. Go to this video. The mini it's just my last one. The mini cheesecakes. Do a thumbs up and write a comment, any comment that you want, um, if you haven't done so, and then you'll be entered in for the um, cookbook um, giveaway. All right, so make sure to do that. Yeah, St. Thomas, that's right. And Dominican, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, that's right, right. Puerto Rico. Um, told you my geography is a bit off. Anyway, so go to this, um, go to that video and make a comment, and you'll be entered in to win a free cookbook all things chocolate. And then if you want another opportunity to win, go to my last live stream event, which was when I announced the book cover winner. The title of it is, um, and the book cover winner is live stream event. That was in August 10. Make a comment over on that one and you'll be entered in to win Instructables, a premium um, membership for Instructables. Pretty cool. And then also I will do for another chance to win something, I will do. Um, I will pull from the people who are here in the chat as a thank you for being a part of the chat. You'll have a uh, potential to win. Yes, pretty neat. Um, so there you go. Make sure to go to those two videos and make a comment and a like to be entered in. I know some of you um, here are already commented on those, but if you haven't and you want a chance to win, do it. <laughs> it's cool. I'm excited. I finally have something else to uh, to offer as a a prize. Um, 
In the past, it's only been premium memberships to Instructables.com, which are pretty cool. They're pretty valuable. I think the one-year premium membership is worth like $60. And then the three-month premium membership is worth like $35 or $30 or something like that. Um, so it's a pretty good value. I think the membership is like $6 a month. And the reason why people get that, uh, pay for the membership, because um, you don't have any ads when you're looking at the Instructables. I'll show you that site again. You won't have any ads. And also, you can, when you find an Instructable, like, like this cool quad, quadcopter one, I can click this download button, the PDF, and download the whole thing, which is really neat to do. Also, the reason why I mention Instructables so much is because I do post my thing, my all my stuff over there. See, here's my mini cheesecakes over there. And people learn differently. Some people, most of you probably here on YouTube, the reason why you're here on YouTube is because you like to learn via video. I'm more that way. I like to learn via video. A lot of people like to learn with written instructions and see pictures and things. And so that's why I post over there at instructables.com for those people who like to learn that way. Yeah, the ebook is really cool. The chocolate, the ebook has all the recipes right there in a page. And, um, but I'm also working on my website, which is going to be awesome. It's going to be pretty much everything rolled into one, which will be awesome. It'll have my YouTube videos embedded in there. It'll have the recipes. It'll have a print function where you can print the recipe and I'll have a little shop where you can find the ebook, where you can find, um, uh, my other stuff that I have there. Uh, pretty awesome. Speaking of other stuff, um, you may have saw on my Video if you didn't see the video um, I'm wearing my let's get baking t-shirt one of my merchant merch options If you scroll down below the videos right here, you'll see some different merch that I have um, a hoodie a little um, tote bag This blue t-shirt that I wear in that video and I'm currently wearing right now. It's hard to see um it's hard to see. Let me scoot back. Yay! Let's get baking! And then on the back, it has my logo in the kitchen with Matt without my face. Some of this stuff has my logo with my face and some doesn't. <laughs> I started to think that people may not want to have the logo with my face on it. Um, <laughs> but there are some. If you do like, like a mug, one of the mugs that I have, like this mug right here, has the full logo with my face. Um, I have another, another mug available that has just the title, let's, um, or if I can do it, you can do it, which is my, which is kind of my like tagline. There's this bacon pillow, which is pretty neat. If you like bacon on the back, it says like hashtag, um, bacon lover, some little, some stickers, some other t-shirts and things. Um, and, and if you have kids and they like the show, I have these kid t-shirts with the, it just says number one baker on it, um, pretty neat. And then I have more at the actual Teespring um, store. If you click on the Teespring store or teespring.com stores in the kitchen with Matt, there's all the different things that I have available there. Um, pretty neat. A lot of different t-shirt options because there, there's different types of blends, like a tri-blend, a woman, women's classic tea, comfort tea, v-neck different things. Here's a long sleeve shirt that says, if I can do it, you can do it. Here's that mug. Anyway, some pretty cool stuff. It's a great way to support the show. Um, and you know, Christmas is coming up. So if you know people that like watching the show, family members, kids, things like that, maybe you could pick something up, um, for them. Also, I want to talk about that book real quick. Um, you can buy my book. If you aren't able to win one for free and you want to buy one, you can get it over here on Amazon. There's the Amazon Kindle version. If you're a member of Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free. Or the Kindle price is $4.99. And if you have the Kindle Reader, which is a free little reader, you can read that on any device that's not a Kindle, on your phone, on your iPad, 
pretty neat. And for international users, I don't think this Amazon link works for international users, but you can get it a different version, which is the PDF version, and my favorite version here on my Etsy store. And if you're international, that works just fine. I think that anybody internationally can um, do that uh, there. So you can, and you can find these links in any of in my latest cooking video, like that cheesecake video. Just scroll down, and you can find the links. Pretty cool. There's my little plugs for the merch and my book. Pretty neat. All right. So let's look back here and chat. So uh, Latin J is more of a visual person. Yeah, I've always been more of a visual. So I loved YouTube when it, I when people started posting things other than cat videos on YouTube and more of like tutorials and things. Um, it was just an awesome place to go to when you wanted to learn how to do something. Something simple like something breaks in the kitchen um, or like you want to figure out how to replace your garbage disposal, you know, something like that. Um, it's really kind of neat to be able to just search on YouTube or you want to learn how to cook something. Huh? Huh? Kirk, over here, cook something. <laughs> you can come to In the Kitchen with Matt and learn how to bake something cool. Um, hey, David, David Evans is here. Awesome. <laughs> the written recipes make me wonder, is it supposed to look like this? You know, that's so funny. So here's the thing about recipes and usually the recipe books and even here on YouTube, my recipes. So I take a picture of the food right after I make it. So my food looks 100% like what they are. Some people they do, uh, so I don't really doctor my photos at all. A little bit, just so the lighting looks a little bit better. And I take a nice image with my camera, so I try to make it look as nice as possible. But that really is how my, how the food turns out. Um, but there's a lot of like cookbooks and things where they will have professional photography done of the, of the food, and that's the image that they use in the recipe. And so it's kind of. I can kind of uh, be disappointing when you make it and it doesn't look quite like that. Well, that's the same as like if you watch commercials for any kind of restaurants or things like that, the food that they show, it never looks like that when you get it. You know, if you go to that restaurant and you order, you know, the order that go to McDonald's and you order a, a, a hamburger, it never looks like the advertisements for, for that. Because um, that's, that's a little, little tip for you. Um, don't be disappointed if when you make it, it doesn't look quite like it does in the picture um, because they probably doctored the photo a little bit just to make it look a little more appealing. Um, but all of mine, they are with exception for with with exception for for one of them, the cookie. One of the cookies. Um, I took a, a photo that I found uh, a, a public domain photo that look. It's the same type of recipe, but it looks uh, it looked cooler. So that's a um, that's what I use for that. So anyway, actually no, sorry. These these photos right here are professional photos. The photos on my cookbook cover are professional photos that represent exactly the thing or the recipe. Those are the I only did that for the book cover. But the actual recipe itself has the real video. If that makes sense, and people that's what people do when it comes to marketing. It's just what's done. <laughs> I went on a little ramble there, but uh, so that just goes back to so don't be too disappointed, Latin J, if um, if when you make it, <laughs> if it doesn't look quite like the video or the picture. Hello, Namakao, and sorry if I pronounce your names wrong. Some some of the four names that I'm not used to reading. If I pronounce it wrong, please don't be offended. Um, Joy Joy, hello, hello, Joy Joy, good to see you. Inoka is wondering what I'm from. I'm from the USA, in a um, state called Arizona. Susie Garner, hello, Susie. YouTube says that she loves um, YouTube instructions for everything. Yeah, that's why I want to finally get my website going, is because then it'll have everything all together. It'll have written instructions. It'll have my YouTube videos there. It'll have um, everything kind of in all in one, an about page, um, a, a sign up 
where you can put in your email and then get like a newsletter from me um, like once a week or something like that. And then I will, you know, say what's going on that week, what, what my um, latest videos were, and you can you know, stay in touch with the newsletter. So that'll be kind of neat. Um, also, the reason why I finally want to do a website is because a lot of people that search on Google, um, they may not go to YouTube, but they will go to recipes that are on, on the web. And that would be just a, a way for me to reach more people and hopefully get them more interested in my YouTube channel, as well as hopefully generate a little more income. Um, a lot of times you'll go to websites and you'll find some ads on there as well. And that's a great way to, uh, you know, monetize a, a site and it'll help me to make more content, um, which is cool. Hello, Warp Nova. Warp Nova is one of my longtime um, supporters. It's been quite a while, Warp Nova, huh, that you've been a part of the show. I want to say at least two or three years that you've been watching stuff and commenting. Susie Garner gave me some my claps. Um, okay, so for those of you who just joined, remember, go and comment on that um, cheesecake, the, my, late, my latest mini cheesecake video for a chance to win that cookbook. All right? And then also, because of everyone is here, um, you know, in the chat participating, I will do a cookbook giveaway for one of you participants. So two cookbook giveaways and then a one-year premium membership to instructables.com and I will pull that from the people who respond to my last live event which was a month ago um, on August 10th okay Sally hello Sally Sally is thanking me for making a the coconut macaroons you requested something coconut and those are perfect if you love coconut try those coconut macaroons and they are so 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 easy to make uh, you know, just a handful of ingredients. Um, really great if you like coconut. <laughs> yes, you are welcome, Sally. I try to get through the rest of um, the requests. I have a whole long list of, um, of request, requests. And some of them are something I may not have ever done before. So I have to take time to, you know, make it and make sure I know how to do it. <laughs> and then I can show you how to do it. And so some of those that I've you know, never done, it might take me a, a lot longer to, to get those requests out. I have some requests from like three years ago that I still haven't been able to get to. I probably have over 100 requ requests. Requests. Why can't I say that word? Requests. Request. Requests. Anyway. <laughs> um, I have a lot of those still in my queue. And then, of course, I want to do the ones that I want to feel like doing. No one re requested the mini cheesecakes but i love those little things and um some people have requested you know simple easy things that they can make and bring to like parties and things and those mini cheesecakes are perfect for that not a ton of ingredients um super easy to make and you don't have to worry too much about the cracking because you're going to top it with stuff and it's not that really big cheesecake um so you have to worry about you know slicing into it and the cheesecake sticking to your knife and things like that, and it's a little harder to manage when you're at like a party situation. But those little mini cheesecakes, perfect dynamite. And people are gonna think that you're like amazing. You bring those things and you just top them with a few of the little fruits and stuff. You take those to a party, people are gonna think that you're like a baking genius. And then they'll probably ask you to do that kind of stuff all the time. Oh, thank you, Sally. Hello, Barb. Yes, you made the chocolate bread. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that chocolate bread. So cool. And what's neat about the bread is you can treat it just like you would with uh, like a banana bread. Like I love, I love to put butter on it. Like the butter and chocolate flavor is really cool. Or if you like like a strawberry chocolate combination, you could put like strawberry preserves or strawberry jam on top of that chocolate bread. And then you get a nice little blend of chocolate and, uh, and strawberry together. That's really cool. And thank you so much, Barb. If you have a chance, um, if you I can't remember if you bought it on Amazon or if you bought it on um, Etsy, but either way, if you could um, do like a quick little review of it, that would be fantastic. That'll help me out, especially on Amazon. It'll help it rank higher on Amazon and help more people to see it. But uh, awesome. We've I've been just uh, chatting on um, for almost 25 minutes here. 
So let's do let's do one of the giveaways. Let's do a giveaway for instructables.com. All right. For those of you who don't know, Instructables is the premier DIY website. It's a really neat place. Um, if you are more of a written learner and you like to see step-by-step -step pictures, there's just, and there's way more stuff than just food here. Here's some examples. Um, this cool outdoor pizza oven. That's really, really neat. Um, let's do like just the home page. Just a really cool categories of things that you may want to learn how to do. And um, just a neat site. Oh, here's pretty neat. I was sponsored, or not sponsored, I had an author spotlight done on me. And as, if you want to go check that out, um, you can learn a lot more about me from this spotlight. Um, there's my marsh marshmallow fondant, uh, pretty cool. But it, it's just a really neat um, thing that you can learn about me. Eventually I'll have that information over on my website. But let's do uh, the premium membership winner from that. And that comes from this one right here. Take this URL. We will plop it in here. Get YouTube comments. Seven unique commenters. So you guys, there's going to be a chance, a good chance for you to win something. It's like a 15 to 18% chance of winning. So the winner of a one year premium membership is PJ. She said, didn't win, so sad. Well, you won this time, PJ. A one year premium membership, PJ. Congratulations, awesome. Yes, Richard, that is a great idea. The cool thing about cheesecakes is you can do any kind of the hard cookies or crackers that you can buy um, at the store, Cong once again, congratulations, PJ, is, but yeah, vanilla wafers you can use, graham crackers, you could use the chocolate graham crackers, you could use Oreo cookies, you could use the vanilla Oreos, um, a lot of those like hard um, types of cookies and crackers you can take and just put them in the food processor and then add the butter to it and use that as your base. So versatile, uh, it's really neat. Or you can actually play around and put some nuts in there too. Um, like you can do like pecans, walnuts, um, or if you're doing like a, if you want to do like a, like a St. Patrick's theme or something like that, and you want to have the crust be like a green or whatever, you can do like pistachio crust. That might sound a little gross, but probably it will taste really good. <laughs> but uh, some pretty, very versatile that what you can do with the crust. So Barbie says she saw the spotlight. That's awesome. Yay, Barb. So yeah, you purchased it on Amazon. If you can, do a, um, do a review. That would be really great, really helpful for me. Yeah, the vanilla wafer, the vanilla wafer crust can be softer because it soaks up some of the cheesecake. Um, the graham cracker crust doesn't soak it up as much. It just depends on the preference. I really like a graham cracker crust, but I'm not really picky when it comes to cheesecake. Um, I've never met a crust that I didn't like. <laughs> uh, there's even probably there's even um, some gluten-free um, crusts that you can make because um, you know. The cheesecake itself is obviously gluten free, but the crust itself, if you use graham crackers, that has gluten in it. But you can do a, a gluten free gr gl uh, crust as well. They have uh, little gl gluten free cr um, crumbly cookies or, you know, hard cookies that you can just crumble those up and use a crust, make a crust out of it. Pretty awesome. Cool. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. All right. So. What would, what would everyone want to do? What do you want me to do now? Do you want me to do the participants um, winner for the, uh, the cookbook? Or do you want me to do the drawing? Or should we do, um, do a couple question and answers right now? What should we do first? Or what should we do next? 
Thank you, Sally. I appreciate it. 72,000 subscribers. I'm getting closer to 100K, the road to 100K. Uh, looking forward to that accomplishment. It's been a long, long journey. November, this coming November will be six years on YouTube. And um, it's been a long ride. Uh, the first, so when I first started in November, I was really consistent and I did a video once a week for a couple months. And then in, and some of you have heard the story. And then in 2014, I only made four videos the whole year because I was so busy with work. And then in 2015, I was able to do maybe 30 videos. Um, and then 2016, maybe getting closer to once a week. And then 2016 was an average of once a week. And then it just started going up from there. And then I had a New Year's resolution for 2019, no matter what, to do three videos. And I include live shows like this as one of the videos um, because once we're done, it creates a video that you can go back and watch. And so I've made it a goal to do three videos for all of 2019 just to see um, and it's been going well. And I did, some of you participated in the poll. I did a poll um, if you wanted me to continue to do three videos a week or if one was just fine or if you wanted to be mo do more. Or, and uh, the majority of you, I think 55%, almost 60% of you said to continue with the three videos a week. So that's cool. As, as of now, I'm going to com continue to try to do three videos a week. Barb says, my next book should be Keto Recipes. Sugar-free, I do have sugar-free recipes. I do have some keto recipes. Barb, if you go back and go to my videos tab on my channel, um, you can find those. So I have several that are um, sugar-free. Sugar-free keto version of recipes, like a keto shortbread cookie, um, keto peanut butter cups, um, some more keto pancakes, uh, keto, keto pizza. <laughs> that keto pizza is really good made with a cauliflower crust. Other than that, I love, um, <laughs> I love sugar. I'm a bit of a sugar addict, chocolate addict. Um, and so that's why probably 70% of my recipes and videos are treats related. So Barbie wants to do participants. All right, so everyone who's listening, if you haven't typed in a while, make sure to type, type, type right now for a few minutes, and that way you'll show up on my participants list. There's a bit of a lag, so make sure to uh, type right there, and then I will do a cookbook winner from the participants cookbook make sure to type something if you're just if you're just chilling I know sometimes when I watch live episodes I just kind of hang out in the background and not don't do anything um, but right now it says that there's only five people that are active in chat so make sure to um, make sure to start chat make sure to start start typing 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 um, Fiona needs more sugar-free recipes. I have a few of them on there. Like all my main course recipes that I do are sugar-free. Like I just did a fried chicken. Um, so there's a, some several. I do have some. I did like like kale chips. Um, so any of my main courses, my baked potato, um, my tachos, the tater tot nachos, those are yummy. So there are several on there. And of course, my keto specific treats, um, those are all sugar free. <laughs> Barb, cauliflower chocolate. Thank you, Joy Joy. <laughs> chocolate weather. That would be awesome to have chocolate rain. Just walk outside and open your mouth and let the chocolate just fall in there. <laughs> You get kind of dirty with chocolate, but. It reminds me of an episode, I don't know however many of you watched The Simpsons, 
um, probably not many of you, but it reminds me of an episode of The Simpsons where Homer Simpson is dreaming and he's in like this chocolate land or um, kind of a candy land. I think chocolate or something and he's dancing around and he's taking and there's these little animals made out of chocolate and he like grabs one and takes a bite out of them. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Anyway, all right, keep chatting, keep chatting and we will do a giveaway for someone here in the chat. Chat, chat, chat. If you are just hanging out, listening. Mushrooms. The portobello mushrooms, the real big portobello mushrooms. Um, those are really cool. You can bake them with like mozzarella cheese in the middle and some, um, some like minced up or chopped up um, bell peppers. And if you want some heat, you know, maybe put a little jalapeno in there and then um, you can top it with some bacon and that makes like a cool little um, or hors d'oeuvre if you like mushrooms. I haven't done that on my site, so I should probably do that for mushroom lovers. Um, I am working on, I was freestyling in the kitchen the other day and I came up with a, um, I mean, it's, the basics are pretty much, most people know the basics of the sauce. It's like a, a white sauce kind of like a, a carbonara, um, something similar to that, but it's a, a cream and butter based sauce for a pasta. And it's really good with bacon and chicken and um, green, or not green, but uh, some um, tomatoes, fresh tomatoes put in there and some spinach. Ooh, so yummy, making me hungry. <laughs> Richard likes the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Yeah, that's a good one. Joy Joy saying, when baking, sub out the sugar with Splenda. Yeah, that works. All right, let's see who else. Make sure that you're chatting. Let me see. Yes, we have more participants now. There we go. There we go. I think we, we have more people have been participating. I see your, I see the participants here. Do, 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 do. Let me get this going. And we will do that drawing. Okay, okay. So what we're gonna do, let me fix this real quick. Pardon me as I get this ready to go. Okay, here we go. So here are the participants that I have that have been active. Barb O, Barbie Goof, David Evans, Joy Joy, Fiona, Richard Worrell, Sally Black. All right. Now, if you are watching and you don't see your name on there, I will give you two more minutes. Okay? Two more minutes to type, and then I'm doing, and then I am doing. And then I am going to do that drawing for the, the people who are, who are here live. Yeah, it's pretty close to a bechamel sauce. Bechamel, bechamel, bechamel. I used to speak French, not really. I took two years of high school French. Um, let's get back to this. Chickpeas. One of these days I will do a homemade um, hummus, which is made with chickpeas. Farah. Hello, Farah. I have done some barb, some ethnic, just a few of them. I did um, some Brazilian, um, what do they call these little chocolate treats? Um, brigadeiros. I've done some, uh, you know, tacos, some Mexican food tacos. Um, I've done like homemade tortillas. I've done some Indian like naan bread. Oh yeah, homemade naan bread is awesome. All right, if you're just listening, type, 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 type. I'm going to do, all right, here we go. Let's do this. 
Do 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 do. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna count numbers. So remember your number. So Barb is number one, Barbie is number two, David is three, uh, Farah, Farah, I can't remember how to pronounce your name. Farah, 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 either way, Farah, like Farah Fawcett, probably. Joy Joy um, is five. Latin J is six, Fiona is seven, and Richard is eight. All right, so you have a great chance. So few of you participants, you have a great chance of winning this free cookbook, chocolate, all things chocolate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll come over here and I put the max number of eight. And then I do the generate. Ready, here we go. This is for the cookbook winner. Number eight, Fiona. Fiona, you won the chocolate cookbook. Congratulations, Fiona. Lillian, you just missed it. Um, you just missed that, um, but you'll have a chance. Okay, so for those of you who have just joined, um, I just did the, um, the drawing for the live, um, and that's for Fiona, won that. Congratulations, Fiona. Fiona, I'll need you to uh, message me um, via email. Fiona, I need you to message me. Um, Sally, you were on there, weren't you? Yeah, you were on there, but your number was, uh, I didn't say your name, but I think you were on there. Um, so Fiona, make, me message me. If you go to one of my YouTube videos, you can find that business uh, email address and just uh, send me an email over there um, and I can give you, get you that book or um, find me on my Facebook, In the Kitchen with Matt Facebook page and send me a message over there. Um, those two ways of getting a hold of me and I can get you that. Um, there is a way um, for me to message directly on YouTube, but it's Sometimes it doesn't always work. Um, but anyway, so go ahead and send me a message and I will get that over to you. Congratulations. All right, so for those of you who have joined late, we did two giveaways already. We did a one year premium membership to Instructables and we did a cookbook giveaway. We still have the last cookbook giveaway to do and this is the participants that have made comments on the um, mini cheesecake video all right and so if you haven't made a comment over there i'll give you a few more minutes to go to that mini cheesecake video my last video and make a comment and a thumbs up and you'll be entered oh they will be huh yeah I was wondering why, because I tried to do it the other day and it wouldn't really, nothing really would work, so it might have already ended. Um, awesome. I do have flan. I do have, I have coco flan, Latin J. I have a recipe for coco flan on my video, here on my uh, channel. Uh, really cool. Yes, Barb, try the naan bread. I think I said hello to uh, Lillian already. All right, so we'll do the, um, the last drawing here in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to end the stream at 10 o'clock, but let's do a couple of questions right now. If you have any questions, Q&A, we can kick off the Q&A for a few minutes and then we'll get on to that last uh, giveaway. So any questions that you have, whatever you want to ask, now is your time to ask. You are welcome, Latin J.
And then if you wanted to just do the flan by itself, you can just take that flan, the recipe for the flan that I use and just use that by itself if you don't want to do the cake part. But it tastes really good together, the flan and the cake together. Any questions that you have asked earlier? Barbie wants to know how long I've been playing D&D. &D. That's awesome that you know what D&D &D is. Um, I've been playing that. I first started playing when I was probably eight years old. It's a long, long time ago. Um, my brothers would play it. Um, this was back in the mid to late 1980s. And my brothers would play it. So, of course, I would want to join them. And uh, I would play. I wasn't, didn't really know what I was doing or anything. But it was, um, I always enjoyed, because of D&D, &D, I always enjoyed movies like Willow, Legend, um, um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, you know, those kind of fantasy adventure movies um, were kind of my favorites. One called Lady Hawk. Uh, so growing up, I loved those videos. And of course, when Lord of the Rings came out, those were my favorite videos in the Hobbit movies. Those are just amazing. I loved that fantasy, uh, kind of the fantasy world. And then um, now I play D&D probably about once a month, um, which is pretty cool. And then my brothers, we all get together for kind of for like a brother's reunion over 4th of July. And we play like three days straight and we have a big epic medieval feast, which is really fun. Can't find the cheesecake video. Sally, if you just go to my, um, go to my YouTube channel and it's my last video that I posted. Go to my YouTube channel and click on videos and it's the last video that I posted. I just posted it on Thursday, just a couple days ago. Flan coco, flan choco, flan coco, coco flan, flan coco. Thank you, Fiona. You're welcome, Barbie. Hello, Farah, Farah. Yeah, David, it's awesome. Who was the DM? So I'm, uh, we take turns, but this last time I have been, I was the DM. Um, like for that, and I planned, it was so crazy. So it was probably like 36 hours of Dungeons and Dragons uh, across the whole 4th of July weekend. We started Wednesday evening, and then 4th of July was on Thursday. That's when we did our epic feast. We played almost the whole day around the feast, and then Friday, and then we ended Saturday evening, late in the evening, we finally finished, and it was pretty epic. If you want to see, I have a video for that um, here on my channel. Um, I don't know if you saw that one, Barbie, but it gives you kind of an insight of um, what we did for that. Really cool, and all the minis that I created, and um, these little tower structures that I made. Pretty neat, so if you're interested, check out that video. Um, it was uh, about a month ago that I posted it, uh, a month and a half ago. Joy Joy, do you know how to figure out the nutritional values of recipes? Yes, there's a website that you can go to. I forget my favorite website for it, but they're, um, well, not my favorite website. There's a couple different ones to find out the nutritional recipes. And you just type in the instruct or the, the measurements of the ingredients, and then it tells you what the instructional portion is. Um, on my website, when I do my website, I think I'm going to include that in there because I know a lot of people like to see that. Um, let me see if I can find that site real quick. Nutritional calculator, maybe. Yeah, so this one works really well. Here, I'll show you. This one works pretty well. It's called verywellfit.com recipe nutrition analyzer. And you can just type in the recipe like right here, how it shows, and then analyze, and it shows you what the, um, what the things are. So it's pretty cool, the nutrition facts. And that works well. That's the one that I've used. Thank you, Lillian.
Flan Cocho. <laughs> Cron meter. What's the most difficult thing you've ever made on your channel? Let me bring this back up so you're not just staring at that. The most difficult thing I've made on my channel. Most likely the macaron. Either the macaron or the or the um, homemade croissant. Croissant. The croissant really is not that difficult. It's just tons of steps involved. The macaron is not really that difficult, but it's it's very finicky. Usually it'll it'll turn out, but it just won't look right. Like in order to get it look exactly like you want it to, it can take a little practice. Um, so those probably are the two most difficult things um, that I've done. Like I said, the homemade croissant is not really difficult. There's just a lot of steps, and it you know takes. A um, couple days to do it, um, but they're so worth it. They're so buttery and flaky and yummy. I love homemade croissant, or here in the States we say croissants. Some croissants. <laughs> uh. Half vanilla flan and half chocolate cake. That's kind of like the one that I do. Um, Latin J. The one, the video that I do is it's half, um, it's half flan. The top is flan, and the bottom is chocolate. And it's really kind of magical because you put the chocolate batter in first. Well, first you put in caramel sauce, and then you put the chocolate batter, and then you put the flan batter on top. And while it bakes, the flan goes magically. It goes through the chocolate batter and winds up on the bottom. And then when you flip the cake over. It's on the top. It's so neat. So make sure to check out that video. You're welcome, Joy Joy. Are you going to finish that croissant? <laughs> so Fiona is in Zimbabwe. Um, I'm sure there's probably some good chefs there. All right, everyone, let's do this final giveaway for the participants on the mini cheesecake uh, video. Let's do that, and then we will just chat for a little bit longer and then call it a morning for me. Oh, thank you, Lillian. I appreciate it. It's such a nice compliment. So it's this video right here. There's that cool shirt, let's get baking t-shirt. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> I know you all want a t-shirt or a mug or a sticker or something. You know you do, you know you want something. The gang's all here. What's up, Connor? Welcome. Let me refresh this. There's this little ad that plays. Yay. Also, if you want to help me out, watch those ads that play on my videos. That helps me to make a little bit of money. Um, helps me helps support my show by watching the ads. Okay, that's refreshed. We'll take this URL. We'll come over here to the, my YouTube comment picker. Put that in there. Whoa. Get the YouTube comments. 20 unique commenters. That's easy math. 5% chance. ZZY, you made it. You made it late. We're about ready to end, but you at least the drawing is here. You uh, met the drawing. You got here for the drawing, and then um, be here for about five minutes longer. All right, so here we go. 20, so you have a 5%, if you commented, you have a 5% chance of winning that book. 
And the winner is Jay Latham. Congratulations, Jay. He says, I used to stress over cooking cheesecakes without cracking. A professional chef gave me a tip that helped me a lot. He said, once people eat your cheesecake, they will not remember the cracks. Just the great taste. And that's really true. You don't, don't worry too much if you make a cheesecake and it cracks because it's not going to affect the taste. And then he, said, he finishes off by saying, and I found that to be so true, well, except for the one I made for a wedding one time. I had a small crack, and the photographer made sure to get that crack in the wedding pictures. <laughs> Congratulations, Jay. Lillian is asking, when did I start my channel? I started my channel in November of 2013. So coming on six years that I've had it. Connor, yeah, I don't know if you made it in there. Next time, next time. All right, Jay, I will reply to your little comment and have you get a hold of me and I can give you, you send you your cookbook. Fiona, remember, you won that live participant one, Fiona, so make sure to message me. Um, Fiona, if you're on Facebook, on my In the Kitchen with Matt Facebook, send me a message over there or find my email here on my YouTube channel and send me a message and I will send you your cookbook. And then um, the winner was PJ for the one year premium membership. Um, PJ, make sure to message me um, and I will send you that one year premium membership. And you can go, just go on, I think you might be on Instructables already, PJ. So just uh, message me over there and I will message you back with your code for that download. All right, three more minutes, three more minutes, and then I'm gonna call it a morning. I still haven't had breakfast yet. Speaking of breakfast, a lot of times I do, and I have a video of this here on my channel, I do a healthy smoothie with spinach and kale, and I do some berries. Um, so, and th this is sugar-free and it's gluten-free. I do berries, I do some carrots, I do a banana and then um, I add in um, either some almond milk. Um, sometimes I'll add orange juice and if it's you know fresh orange juice, there's no added sugar, but orange juice in general has um, has an, you know natural sugars in it, um, which if you are diabetic um, or pre-diabetic, even though orange juice may not have added sugar, the natural sugar, sometimes you're not supposed to drink that. Um, but I usually don't, I drink, I will add maybe like four ounces of orange juice and then the rest water to dilute it, but just gives it a little bit of more of a taste. And you blend it up and you got yourself a nice smoothie. And so I'll drink half of that for breakfast and then I'll save the other half for lunch. And then I'll add like um, hard boiled eggs for lunch and some cheese. And then I will do um, some chips and that's my lunch. And then for dinner, I'll do like a big salad or something like that, or fried chicken, or you know, or like ham homemade hamburgers or something like that. Um, but sometimes, um, and the reason why I eat so few carbs during that time is because I always have shows that I do that has lots of treats. <laughs> um, you know, like the cheesecakes. I don't know. I can't tell you how many of those cheesecakes. I did give six of them away, but out of the fourteen that I wound up making. I think I ate maybe 12 of them <laughs> or eight. No, 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 I gave away six. So I ate, I think eight of them. I ate in the period of like three days. <laughs> uh, yes, I do like cheesecake. So f yeah, for breakfast, I'm gonna make that smoothie and uh, maybe I'll do actually some fried eggs with it. Yeah, fried eggs. Fried eggs and a smoothie. Also every once in a while I'll go crazy and I'll do my favorite bacon, eggs, and hash browns breakfast, or I'll do some homemade waffles or pancakes every once in a while.
A vegetarian Stefado, nice. Lillian is asking what my favorite video is. Um, Connor, there's always someone that, there's always one or two people that dislike. There's like, there's a, there's one hater that's, I swear it's the same person that dislikes <laughs> my videos. Maybe they're jealous. Maybe they just don't like me. I don't know, but it happens. Bananas and carrots are yummy. What is my favorite video? It's hard to say what my favorite video is. Um, it's hard to say what my favorite video is. Um, the most popular has been the cinnamon roll video and the crepes video and the and the um, the what are they called? The little cakes. Why can't I think of them? Cake pops. Those three have been the most popular. I really like those three videos. Um, I really like this last mini, this mini cheesecake video. I really like it. I love um, how it turned out. I like the uh, the close-ups of the cheesecake. I love the image that I was able to get um, for the thumbnail. Um, so I really like it, and they just taste so amazing. Like anyone should be able to make those and have the same results as I did and really impress your friends and family, especially if they love like a cheesecake. Honestly, those little cheesecakes, um, you can find them at a bakery that same size and they're selling for like three or four dollars a piece for one of those little mini cheesecakes. And um, it probably only cost me maybe five total dollars in ingredients to make all those. Pretty awesome. That's a, that's a, that's a huge, huge savings right there. Um, all right, everyone. Oh, that was one of your favorite ones. That's awesome, Joy Joy. All right, everyone. It's 10.02. I went two minutes over. I'm going to call it a day, call it a morning here, um, 10 a.m. I have, um, to eat and I have some work to do in my little patio. I got to clean that up a bit and then I got to get to working on my website. I'm learning about myself. I'm learning WordPress so I'm going to do it all myself. Um, I did ask some people um, how much it would cost if they did it all and it was like $3,500. Um, I just can't afford that so I'm going to learn it and do it all myself and see. It just means it'll take longer but that's okay. I have time <laughs> uh, and then I got to get working on what uh, I got to like think of the video I'm going to do um, on Monday and get next week's stuff rolling as well. So it's a busy day. I work every day except for Sunday. Um, pretty much I work on this stuff. So it's pretty busy. And then, um, yeah. All right, everyone. You're welcome. Hello, Winnie. You just made it. <laughs> Oh yes, the mini cheesecakes will freeze very well. So with that said, I would recommend not freezing them with the toppings. So if you know you're going to freeze them, you like make the mini freeze, uh, cheesecakes and you know, if you have some fruit left over from something. See, I love buying the fruit because I'm going to put the fruit in my smoothies anyway. So I'll buy the fresh fruit and then use just a little bit of it for the cheesecake. You just, you don't put a whole lot on the little mini cheesecakes. And then I use the rest for my smoothies. But if you want to freeze them, um, you can take them out, leave them in the muffin. Um, you can take them out of their muffin paper and then you can put them in like a, a um, is freezer bag, a Ziploc bag, like a gallon bag. Lay it flat and put it in your freezer, you know, as many as you want and let them freeze. And then take them out and leave them at room temperature for about 30 minutes. They'll fall out, fall out nicely. And then you can put your toppings on and ready to go. And they'll taste almost like you just made them. So yes, they freeze really well. I forgot to mention that in the video, um, how to store them if you want to store them long term. A lot of times I forget to say how to store things because I give half of it away and then I eat the other half and it never has, I never have time to store them. <laughs> but uh, thank you everyone. Thanks for joining. Awesome, yeah, try uh, converting that to sugar-free. 
um, you can probably add something like xylitol or Splenda or something to the um, instead of the sugar um, to both the graham crackers. Well, the graham crackers have sugar in it. Um, find some kind of a sugar-free cracker cookie that you could use for the bottom and then just add like Splenda or xylitol or something like that to the uh, for the cheesecake filling and I think that would work just fine. Um, I haven't tried it specifically but I think that'll work. Make sure to add the eggs um, and that will make when you so when you bake it it'll help to get it to set properly and uh, there you go and let me know how it turns out Barb. Um, reply to my cheesecake video with um, how successful you are with converting it over to sugar-free. Okay, bye everyone. Awesome world of ga gaming. I'm glad you joined. I'm glad Lillian told you about my um, about my channel. Uh, welcome, welcome. You just caught the tail end of the the, the stream here. I've been going on for uh, over an hour. <laughs> my voice is parched, and my uh, or my throat is parched, and my tummy is rumbling. So I will end it. So, wait, over here. Thanks everyone for joining. We'll do it again soon. Um, right now I only have time to do once a month, but in the future maybe I'll do it uh, maybe twice a month. Um, okay, all right, we'll see you again. And then make sure to comment when this video is done. Um, there'll, be a li there'll be a replay version of it here on my channel. Make a comment, thumbs up, and um, you will be entered into the, the next live stream, um, okay, for a giveaway. Bye.